we will now discuss about this course textile product design and development. Let us see, try to understand first, what do you expect in this course? First of all, we will focus on functional and ergonomics design aspect of textile products, general development process stages which is followed in the product design and development will be discussed. Next, we will learn about the design basics, the need analysis, need metric matrix development, development of specifications, concept generation, product architecture, use of natural analogy, whatever we can, material selections that is how to select fiber or if it is fiber blend, yarns, fabrics, etcetera, there will be all be discussed in this course. Besides also we will see how to apply mathematical models which are existing and models have been built by many researchers, how to make use of some of those models. Performance property relationship also will be no, a part of this course we will discuss and how to estimate the design parameters for different types of textile products. They all will be taken up and also there will be some practical examples or case studies on technical product development will be part of this course. So, this is what you can expect in this course. We go to the next slide now. Now, what is product design? <clears throat> design is a set of activities beginning with the perception of the market opportunity and ending in production, sale and delivery of the product. So, design is just not limited to only design part but it actually starts from finding out whether market opportunity exists or not. That is, we just cannot design for the sake of design something. Unless there is a customer, there is a buyer, buyer then there is no point in designing. That means, there has to be a market opportunity for anything that we want to design. That would be somebody, there has to be some takers. So, that opportunity is important to find out, this is a part of design activity and also going through the entire process of designing, we will study that, what are the various steps which are involved. Then actual production, mass scale production of the product also is a part, then actual sale and delivery of the product, actually the entire process is a part of product design, but we will limit ourselves to, to not to exact how to sell or how to delivery of the product, all those details we will not take up, but in a actual situation in a organization when they try to develop a product, they look into all aspects starting from finding out market opportunity to the delivery of the product, everything is looked into then only they start the designing process. All right. So, from there the next slide is to understand if the product development team. The product development or product design is not a one man's or one woman activity. A group of people belonging to different backgrounds or having different expertise, they participate in the product development 
or product designing team. And we are showing this designing team or development team on the left hand side. So, what you see within the green rectangle is the code team and what you see in between the green rectangle and the black rectangle, they are extended team members. So, who are those people who will participate in the product development or product design? Marketing professionals, we need them because they can find out whether the market opportunity exists or not. They can also find out what is the customer needs, what the customers are looking for, what should be the right target price of the product and when to launch the product and the promotion activities of the product. These are all required to make a product design successful and therefore, marketing professionals also becomes a part of this team. Then comes manufacturing engineers or actual production people, because whatever the designer design, the production person or those who are involved in the production of the product, they must make sure that this is the item that has been designed can be produced on a mass scale, because they know the what technology exactly exists, what about machines they have in the manufacturing process. So, they will try to judge the design from the angle of actual production on a mass scale. Then we need a designer, obviously a designer is one of the most important uh, role he is going to play, he or she. So, textile designer also will be there and there will be purchasing specialist. That means, people who will basically try to procure the different kinds of raw material that we need to design a product availability of the raw material and the various components that we require. Then only the product will be successful, otherwise many designs are not successful many times, because uh, when we want to launch it or we may not get the right material at the right price or at the right time. So, therefore, in an actual big organization setup these are the people who will also participate in the as a member of the design team. And one of them could be a team leader, then we also need members from the finance department, because whatever we produce when it goes for a large scale production, then obviously a lot of money is involved there. So, finance people can suggest about the availability of financial resources. Legal team or legal member also is important, because we must know that uh, the there are sometimes lot of legal aspects, safety aspects of the design. And when you want to introduce a new product in a, in a country, we must know what are the laws of the, that country. So, the legal member will take care of all such issues related to the stated to the legal aspects when you want to promote the products or sell the products in a certain market. Sell people also will be able to tell us or whether the product will be sellable or not, because the sale persons has a direct link with the customers. The rest of the people are, have no idea about the customers, no characteristics, what the customers are looking for and how to sell the product, what should be the 
know, unique selling propositions or USP of the product so that it can be sold easily. This kind of information can be found, we get it from the sale person and then comes another person called supplier. So, suppliers because there will be a lot of materials that we need for designing or developing a product. So, the suppliers or the vendors who are there in the industry, then they can also help in ensuring whether the different components or different raw materials which we require to design a new product, what is the difficulty in procuring them or making them available to the industry where the design activity is going on. That is why the suppliers should also be, you know, could be part of this loop that they should be part of the development team. So, that is how you can see that so many people are involved actually in a design activity in a industrial setup. Okay. Challenges in product design. What are the various challenges we have in product design? One is the trade off between cost versus performance. This is one very big challenge that the design designer is going to face. That is, what is the performance of the product? And for a given performance, what is going to be the cost? So, this becomes that has to be obviously generally in a, as a layman's term, we can say if we look for better and better performance, the cost is going to be more and more because you have to introduce better quality raw material there, raw material cost will increase. If we want to reduce the fall, there has to be a lot of inspection during the production process. So, you need more time. So, everything will add up to the final cost and hence if the performance has to be better, cost is going to rise also. So, we have to see whether we will be able to sell the products or not. So, therefore, cost versus performance trade off is very, very important in the product design. The other thing is dynamics that is technologies improve, competitors also introduce new products in the market, customer preferences also changes season to season, year to year. So, decision making in a changing environment becomes a very, very difficult task for the designer. So, he has to take care of these aspects. The other thing is time pressure, product development decisions have to be made very, very fast because your competitors otherwise going to introduce a new product and therefore, time pressure also will be always there. Like in textiles, especially in the fashion market, every season we introduce new type of designs. So, there is a very limited time which is available and within that time frame the designing has to be done, the production has to be also be finished and the product should be made available in the market. So, there is always a time pressure in certain types of products, not all types of product, but in some types of products which are products which have a you know uh, season to season variation could be there and products which are uh, basically consumer type products there the time pressure will be always there. The economics, it requires very large investment sometimes depending upon what type of products we are designing. The product should be both appealing and inexpensive to produce. So, cost has to be kept in mind while thinking about the design. That is also important. Uh, because very costly items will be very difficult to sell. And the other thing is the details, detailing becomes very, very important. 
that is the design team or the designer has to work out the details of the design also. All minute details he has to work out and therefore, these are all basically the various challenges in the product design process. Now comes what exactly a design we mean. Design is a process of constructing a description of a product that satisfies number one functional specifications and aesthetic needs. That is one thing. Other thing it must meet certain performance criteria within available resources using available technology. The other thing is satisfies criteria such as simplicity, testability, manufacturability and reusability. These are all part of the actual design that it has to satisfy some functional specifications or performance specifications you can say of the product. Some products have some aesthetic you know, needs also, especially most of the wearable products that we use in textile, there is aesthetic part of the design as well other than the functional. Any consumer product for that matter has an aesthetic aspect also. Then there is uh, the performance criteria whatever is there that has to be met with the available resources and the available technology of that particular organization. We have to see that also. The whatever resources are there and whatever technology that we have, we should be able to meet the performance criteria and it has to be simple like simple to operate any gadgets that people are making or it has to be very simple to operate and use. Then testability should be easily testable. Then manufacturability is another criteria that has to be satisfied in the design that is I should be able to manufacture it easily. There should not be any difficulty in the manufacturing process and reusability. Nowadays very important because of the pollution that we are going to create. So, that recycling or reusability of the product has become a that is a part of sustainability. See nowadays it is very very now becoming very important that is we call sustainable design. That is design has to be such that it should be sustainable. That is we try to use natural material or make the product in such a way that you use consume less energy, less water and less labor. The other thing is that once the product has, has lived its life, then whether can we recycle the product or not. So, these are all actually a part of the design. So, design is a process of constructing a description of a product that satisfies and meets and all these uh, aspects that we have discussed. So, what we have discussed that is only in general terms of product design that is not textile specific that these aspects that we have discussed are true for any product whether it is textile or not does not matter. For any product these statements will be always true. Now, let us go to textile or product design. Now, textile products if you think Designing textile product has been carried out for thousands of years. So, 
Since the beginning of civilization, textile is with us and clothes have been designed for several centuries or maybe millennium also. Similarly, there are certain technical textile product like ropes and cord edges, they have been also designed for millennium. So, it is not that the we are trying to design it for the first time, they have been designed by the designers of Easter years long, long ago. But that designs were what? It was traditional and in an intuitive way people have designed the product. So, while they have designed the product successfully, more in an intuitive way, no standard procedure was not available those days or there is no science and no technology those days, but still the products have been designed and people have used it and people have survived. And there is no product design course those days, neither there was any engineering or any science, but still people because of people are always intelligent no? and therefore, some people could always make certain things. They have made lot of tools for their use, they have made their shelters, they have designed, they have designed their clothes and they have designed other you know, utensils. So, whatever material was available those days, whatever technology they had, all everything was manual, they have done and they have survived. So, in those days the design is usually carried out manually based on experience and turn and error. Even today also there are many textile products which are designed manually and they are all based on experience and based on trial and error method. In contrast to scientific and mathematical problems, design problems have no unique answers. This is another important part that we must remember that when you say you design something which will satisfy certain you know, requirements, then different designers will come out with different solutions. So, therefore, a design problem may have multiple solutions also and all the solutions will be correct. So, that is why you see that whatever products you see in front of you, you will find that so many different varieties of products are existing in front of you. If you look at the chairs, you see there are so many different types of chair design. Chairs are made from plastics, plus chairs are made from wood, it is made from metals. So, because different materials are available, so people have made use of it and they have made the design. Then only you see the shape and size of the chair, there are different types of shape and size and there are different types of architecture also. And therefore, if we say chair as an example, which is used for people to sit on it, but that purpose of sitting on an elevated surface is fulfilled by all those designs. And therefore, we can say that the design problems have multiple answers or multiple solutions. It is not like a mathematical problem where we have only one unique answers. And many a times a good answer may turn out to be a bad answer tomorrow, if there is a growth of knowledge and technology. Something which is good today may be a very bad tomorrow, because tomorrow some new things may come up, some new materials may appear in the market or some new technologies may come and you see therefore, again the product, new product will be designed. 
like we do not have earlier we have only yarns made from as an example I am keeping ring spinning system was there. So, you used to get only ring spun yarns. Then came roto spinning. So, is that another new type of yarns appeared in the market and people started using roto spun yarns. Then came bear jet spinning, another new technology appeared and people started also using air jet, then came vortex. So, technology is changing, new types of yarns are being made. We have see then we had filament yarns, we have bulk yarns, we have carded yarns, we have combed yarns. So, as technology changes, new types of yarns are coming in the market. Today, we have compact yarns also. So, various, various types of yarns are coming. And as they come, new and new products are being made or old products are basically made the same products, I should not say old products, the same products are being made with new types of material. Like as new and new fibers are coming in the market now, there was a time when there was only we had natural fibers, like we only had only cotton and wool and silk in the apparel sectors or linen. These are the four or five fibers we had at a time, some time. And then with the development of science and understanding of chemistry, people started developing rayon fibers, then came polyester fiber, nylon fiber, and then came many more fibers started appearing uh, one after the other. So, as new fibers are uh, started coming, we wanted to use them, whatever products we were making out of earlier. So, that improved the, it became a new design and that it improved sometimes the performance of the product and their acceptability in the market also improved. So, it is that is why the answer the design answer of today, which is very good, very elegant, may not be relevant tomorrow because of these changes. Similarly, you see the there is evolution of design. No, if you look at the mobile phone also as an example, mobile phone used to be at the time there was no mobile phone, then there came mobile phones, people started using it, and with time that is the design kept on changing in terms of the performance of the phone kept on improving and improving and improving. So, today most of us are having smartphones with us, there are a lot of features and so this design answer or a design which was good 10 years back is no more good today. Today the designing has to be different because knowledge has improved and the technology also might have improved. Therefore, in the product designer has to keep in mind these aspects also, so that he can always offer something different, something new to the customers. Here we are trying to classify the textile products now. Now, textile products can be classified into three groups. One is apparel products, home textile products and technical products. So, apparel products, trousers, shirts, suits and all other things that you use on a daily basis these are existing with us for a long, long time, the apparel products. Then we find home textile products like towel, bed sheet, curtain, seat covers, carpets also we can include. So, there are so many home textile products that you use and we can classify the textile products into a home textile category also. And the third category is the technical textile products. Nowadays, 
technical textile products are becoming very, very important. And therefore, here we have industrial products, protective textiles, build tech, agro tech, medi -text, medical textile products, geo textile products, mart textiles and many more are coming. So, the tech use of textiles in developing technical products is something which is new, it was not there. Earlier for centuries we had apparel products with us and home textile products also, both of these are existing with us for a long, long time. The contribution of textile into technical products earlier was very limited. Like we used to make as I said earlier that ropes and cords or cut uh, ropes and cords especially, these we have been using for a long, long time because we want to tie logs or we want to build a shelter. So, we used to have the ropes and cordage has a you know, use for a long, long time. We used to filter out the water also using a cloth, basically straining of water. So, that part was we have used it. So, and we can say that uh, like we have used textile for a long time as a wicking material, when there was only we used to have only we used to get light using oil and we used to have only a wick which we used to lit and uh, that used to give us you know, the light. There was a time these are the things which are there. So, th these are the limited use of you, know, you can say a textile as a technical textile part. It is not that technical textile was not there earlier, but today we are trying to develop more and more technical textile products and that you know, the application of the fiberglass product into the technical areas are actually increasing day by day. The development of high performance fibers is also increasing the scope of the use of textiles into technical areas and therefore, the designing of technical textile is also very, very important today. Okay. Now, distinguishing features in textile products, the one of the important distinguishing feature is volume. Okay. The other important feature is value per unit and the third distinguishing feature is design complexity. So, you can also find out the, the, the distinguishing features of textile products in terms of volume, value and design complexity. Okay. The level of these factors vary depending upon the extent of speciality in the intended product which is a direct function of the level of the design performance. Now, I have given some examples, so that these aspects becomes very clear to you like apparel products. So, we know that earlier we have you know, categorized the products into apparel. Now, volume and value and design complexity wise, why do you place them? Apparel products volume wise is very, very high. So, majority of the textile is going into making apparel products. That is why we say the volume of production is extremely high. So, most of the fibers that we produce both synthetic and uh, natural, most of it goes into making apparels. So, the volume is very high, the value is low, cost wise they are low. 
and design complexity wise if you try to see design complexity is low they are easy to design they are mostly dependent on experience intuitions or duplications that is they are very easy to duplicate or copy functionalities are becoming important now now what aspects of the design is becoming important now is the functionality aspects that is we are trying to introduce anti bacterial clothing nowadays flame retardant clothing as an example functional athletic socks and things like that so you will find many more examples because of the development of the finishing techniques we are trying to add new functionalities into the apparel products otherwise these are the things which are new now otherwise design complexity wise this is very easy to design and this designing has been made much earlier uh, by our predecessors and when the designing was only based on experience and intuitions okay next category of products are home textile products the home textile products volume wise is medium so there is not much that we produce so volume wise medium value wise also low they are not very costly so design complexity wise also they are low they are not very complex in terms of their uh, design like designing a towel or designing a bed sheet or a pillow cover or designing a carpet or a seat cover they are not difficult design they are relatively easy to design and this is also dependent on experience and intuitions or duplications but again here also functionalities are becoming important day by day so in home textile products also we are adding these new features of we are making things anti static like we want to produce anti static carpets the electronic industry this is becoming very important and we also want that the carpet in the even home text and the domestic use also they should be they should not generate static charge so anti static as a you know as a functionalities we are trying to introduce into the carpets and when we have gone for synthetic carpets is becoming more important then stain resistance carpet is another functionality is trying to introduce fire retardant upholstery is maybe cotton also is a part of home textiles so they have to be made fire retardant see these are fire retardant carpet fire retardant upholstery is more important why it is very very important in railways is important in hospitals and it is important also in schools of children and also in domestic use as well we want fire retardant upholstery fire retardant car fire retardant curtains so these are the things which are now coming into the designing aspect of home textiles now the other part is products are technical textiles they are low in volume so their total amount that is produced is still very low in comparison to the apparel production or home textile productions but the value wise they are very very high so they are very very costly in comparison to apparel and home textiles and there is lot of design complexity this is where the designing wise they are very complex we need to use mathematical tools and we have to use the various you know, principles of engineering here to make very efficient technical textile products and here duplication is difficult they are not easy to copy so 
the three types of product that we see, we can then also see that volume wise, value wise and design wise, how do they stand? Now, we will go to types of product development projects. Okay. Types of product development projects. On the right hand side, we are showing you there are four types of product development projects could be there or product designing projects. One is new product platform. Next is derivatives of existing product platform. Then is incremental improvement to existing products and fundamentally new products. So, in a development product development projects, we can have four different categories. A new product platform or derivative of existing product platform or incremental improvement to existing products or fundamentally completely new products. Now, what is the new product platform? It means a family of product is created based on common platform. Platform is basically a set of assets shared amongst set of products. That means, here you choose a platform where multiple products can be made. That is how is called is completely new product platform, where using the same platform I can use many, many products. Derivatives of existing product platform means these projects extend an existing product platform to better address familiar markets with one or more new products. That is a product already exists and we want to slightly modify it and get to get into a new market. We find that there is a use of like let us say as a very good example of this could be the use of mask now what is designing of mask. So, suddenly there is a opportunity that came to the designer that there is a requirement of mask throughout the world, there is a huge demand of mask. So, what happened? Those who are manufacturing other products, let us say those who are having stitching machines, those anyway they are using the various types of fabrics in their products. So, all those garment manufacturers that basically means those who are busy in making suppose something called ladies tops or water weights whatever it is making. So, there are those who are actually involved making apparels or those who are involved in making home textile like bed sheets let us say they now get an opportunity to switch and make a technical products which is the mask. So, this is basically an example of derivatives of existing product platforms. The existing facilities that you have, you make use of it and satisfy a new market which is in front of you. This is what is derivatives of existing product platform. The other thing is like I have given an example of this a product platform of non ovens if we have suppose we have a non oven product platform where non oven materials are there and we with the non oven fabrics we make various types of products we can make we can make diapers of child aged we can also make wiper out of this so if non open product platform is there, then we can have various products which can be made from non ovens. Secondly, suppose we have a oven filter fabrics, 
apart from that is we have a filter fabrics making unit and we ultimately make some open filter fabrics. We can these fabrics can go for cement industry, textile industry, chemical industry, and other industry also. So, same platform is used to serve different types of industry. So, I can make if I was earlier making only products for cement industry or textile industry, then I can think of that let me also try to make something for chemical industry now to develop some filters which can be used for the chemical industry or maybe for pharmaceutical industry. So, these are called basically derivative products, creation of derivative products. The other type of product development type of you know, projects could be incremental improvement to the existing products. Most of the time that is what we do that is we already have some designs with us, some products, some every organization making some products, a spinning mill is making yarns. So, for him for the spinning mill yarn is the product. Suppose some there is a weaving unit only manufacturing fabrics nothing else for them fabric is the product. Those who are making garments only their final garment is the product for them. So, the way every industry is making something it could be making raw material for the for another industry, but whatever it is making that becomes its own product. So, incremental improvement is where we are existing product is improved in terms of its functions or performance. Here the projects are aim the aim of the project is adding or modifying some features in the existing products in order to keep the product line current and competitive. Like if I have a socks making unit, I can improve the design by having anti microbial socks. So, you can see there is a uh, demand for anti microbial socks and therefore, we can think that we can start purchasing anti microbial yarn and make socks out of it or we can give the socks an anti microbial treatment before they are packed. So, then it could be a slight improvement in the existing design. So, these are then it will be known as incremental improvement on the existing design. So, it could be similarly anti-static carpet or frame retardant mosquito net somebody who is manufacturing mosquito net he can add a feature and he can claim that my mosquito nets are flame retardant also. So, this type of development activity if we carry out then we call it incremental improvement to existing products. The another type of product development projects could be fundamentally new product design that is such type of product did not exist earlier. It is radically different product involving risk and the market is also unfamiliar because this product did not exist earlier and completely new products it is. So, such type of thing an example is like mobile computers these are typical examples of this because it was not there earlier and they. So, when the mobile phone was first conceived by group of people or designer that time for them the market is unknown they do not know who is going to buy it whether such a device will have a market at all or not. So, there is a lot of risk involved the market is also not 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 known also and the designing aspects of such product is highly scientific in nature. This product can be developed only when new knowledge gets generated. So, they becomes 
when such products appear in the market they are known as fundamentally new products. So, in textiles such examples are not many or very few could be which are fundamentally new products which was never there like development of artificial artery if we say made from textiles. This is could be a fundamentally new product. So, we can say the entire product development can be categorized into these four different categories. What are the reasons for new product design that why at all a new product has to be designed. Products are there anyway in the market. So, why should I again you know put money employ a designer and pay him and think of designing something new. What is going on let it go on for years after years. So, what are the reasons for new product design? Market pool is one reason that is the market need or looking for something new, you looking for an improved product and that is identification of customer need from fashion, from legislation or from seasonal factors. Fashion changes, so as the fashion change there will be demand for new products and Therefore, if an organization is there, industry is there, which can feel the pulse of the people and they are trying, they understand that the fashion is going to change and people are going to buy something new, something looks which, will, which looks different, then that could be an opportunity for designing a new or a different product. Sometimes that could be legislation in a country that government legislations are passed and therefore, a product, a new product, a demand for a new product will also come into the market. Like suppose there is a, if there is a legislation in this country that we want all curtains to be flame retardant which are used in hospitals, then suddenly there will be big demand for flame retardant cartons for the hospitals. So, all the existing cartons which are frame not frame retardant they will be removed and new products will come or it could be in the uh, your trains or, or it could be the so let us say frame retardant all seat covers should be frame retardant. So, if such kind of legislation comes in a country then also there will be sudden demand and so this is known as market pull is there and therefore, new products uh, can be then designed. The other thing could be technology push, recognition of new technical potential such as research findings, but one has to find out whether it fulfills customer need or not that some new knowledge is generated also some because of them doing some some as a as a fallout of some research and or that could be a technology push could be there because some new technology has come like when compact spinning appeared commercially and became successful then people started using compact spun yarn into sharding fabrics and therefore the technology is a technology push products which appeared in the market because of the change in the production technology of yarn making. The other thing is situation opportunity, exploitation of new manufacturing methods. So, that could also, so it is also a part of technology development that if there is a new manufacturing method that comes, then people make use of this uh, also that uh, if there is a new way of making a fabric, 
or is a new way of finishing techniques. There is improved way of doing some finishing, then that becomes a situation opportunity. The other is the direct request, the request from big organizations such as defense or big buying houses, Marks and Spencer, Ford, Gap, Nike, etcetera, they may request and based on that request you can think of designing something new. So, with this let us close this particular lecture and uh, we will take it up again, we will see something different in the next lecture. Thank you.